Ode to Aptera, the most efficient vehicle on the planet. <laughs> My name is Rich Rodriguez and welcome to my Aptera journey. This channel is about the thrill of the all-wheel drive Aptera on a twisting curving mountain road and the rush of adrenaline with sub 4 second acceleration time and the pleasure of charging your car from the sun. And on some models the confidence of up to 1000 miles of range. But we don't have an Aptera yet. Despite that, there are some things I would like to share with you today. First though, a little bit about me. I'm a trained electrical engineer and so I understand how EVs work. I'm an EV owner with over 150,000 miles of driving experience, so I get range and charging. I have an MBA in finance and I have been mentored by an investment banker and in my, day job, in my day job, I read and analyze financial statements every day. So what attracts me to the Aptera? The awesome styling? Yes. Is it the sub 4 second 0 to 60 acceleration time? Yes. Well, is it the solar charging? Yes, but I live in the rainy northwest. Or is it Aptera's amazing efficiency? For me, it's all about efficiency because with Aptera's efficiency all those other things are possible. And for these reasons I'm an investor in Aptera, an ambassador and a reservation holder. Well with the preliminaries done today's video will have four parts. Part 1 Current Financial Market Conditions. This matters for when Aptera does their IPO. Part 2 Comparing Aptera to other three-wheeled vehicles. I'm going to have a giveaway and then there'll be part three, comparing Aptera to other inexpensive EVs. Part four, update on Aptera funding. So with those preliminaries done, let's get started. Part one current financial market conditions. This matters for when Aptera does their IPO. I follow the 20 bond municipal bond index to see where interest rates are heading. I look at market conditions every week. From a medium term perspective, rates have risen dramatically. The 20 bond was as low as 2.03% in July 2020 and today it's 3.93%. An increase of rates that's nearly double, 93.6% increase to be exact. What has that done to America's pocketbook? It's hurt, that's what. With the increase in rates, credit card rates have gone up. Auto loan delinquencies have hit the highest level in a decade. In part, this is due to the interest rate increase and new app credit card applications now average 24.7% up from 16.43% in August of 2020, an increase of 50.4%. Compounding the interest rate increase, large bank consumer credit card balances are at all-time highs. Because the Fed has not been satisfied with their progress on inflation, rates are likely to be higher for longer. In fact, Fed Chair Powell hasn't ruled out 
a rate increase. So will rates be increased before too long? It's not a good time to go public, but it's a great time to start and grow a sustainable orientated startup like Aptera Motors as a long-term investment in the future. Part two, comparing Aptera to other three-wheeled vehicle types. Let's take a look at some other three-wheeled vehicles and see what's out there. Vanderhall, founded in 2010 and based in Provo, Utah, the initial model was a three-wheeled roadster, federal, federally classified as a motorcycle, which means you'll have to wear a, a helmet. The car received federal certifications in 2016. They do offer an electric version called the Santa Tosa. That three-wheeler starts at $33,950, features a range of 150 miles, and is powered with 180 horsepower, 132 kilowatts of output, and weighs around 1,600 pounds. A fully upgraded Santa Tosa is available for $42,000 950 and offers 300 miles of range. While a fun looking vehicle, the Santa Tosa is seemingly not yet in full production. And being open topped, you'll be exposed to the weather and need a helmet, though the vehicle does have a heater and AC. The Morgan Three Wheeler, a classic UK sports car. While a three-wheeler, the Morgan Super 3 is a fossil car and is excluded from further discussion here. Morgan has demonstrated an experimental electric, the XP1, and hopefully they'll come to market before too long. The Can-Am. The Can-Am family of three-wheelers, like the Morgan Super 3, are all fossil vehicles and exclude it from further discussion here. Polaris Slingshot. Also interesting, but like the Can-Am, these are unfortunately all fossil vehicles. Helix Motors, an interesting electric three-wheeler that tilts. Though it seems there's not been much activity in the Helix Motors website since 2017. Carver, similar to the Helix, a tilting three-wheeler. The Carver is actually in production in the Netherlands. The three-wheeler starts at around $13,000 and tops out at around $15,000. Features include room for two, a soft top that opens, and the Carver has a top speed of around 50 miles per hour and a range of around 65 miles. With a rate with a weight of about 750 pounds, windshield defogger, and yes, even AC is an option. The Carver seems to me to be a great urban suburban runabout. So what have we learned? There are not a lot of three-wheeled electric vehicles out there. Of the two we looked at, the Vanderhall and the Carver, neither offers the range of 400 miles like the Aptera Launch Edition, and the enclosed vehicle, the Carver, is really best suited for urban driving given its limited 65 mile range and 50 miles per hour speed. So it seems that if you want an awesome three-wheeler that's electric with range and is capable of freeway speeds, the choice is clear, Aptera. Giveaway time. The winner of the giveaway is Robert Wakeman, 1879. Robert Wakeman, 1879, that's his handle on YouTube. Robert will be mailed a small green Aptera 3D printed model from me as a gift. Remember, for every 10 Aptera referrals I receive, I'll give away a small Aptera 3D printed model. There's a QR code up here to reserve your Aptera, and there's a link down below to reserve your $100 
refundable deposit on an Aptera. Part 3. Comparing Aptera to other inexpensive EVs. With the base 200 mile range Aptera estimated to cost around $29,300 and the 400 mile launch edition starting at $33,200, let's see what other EVs are available at around these price points. The Nissan LEAF. The 2024 Nissan LEAF starts at around $28,140 and is eligible for a $3,750 tax credit, bringing the final price down to $24,850. Very appealing for a four-door sedan. Downsides? The low-cost model has only 150 miles of range, and the LEAF's type of fast-charging port, the Chatamo plug, isn't as widely supported and may soon be obsoleted. This makes road trips more problematic. Additionally, the Nissan LEAF battery is air-cooled, and after two quick charging stops, it charges slower and slower. Definitely a bummer for long road trips. The 2024 Mini Electric Hardtop. The Mini Electric starts at around $30,900 and is only available as a two-door. The EPA gives the car an estimated driving range of 114 miles. Still, its low starting price makes it a good entry point for EV ownership. Tesla Model 3. The base Tesla Model 3 starts at $38,990 and offers 272 miles of range. Be careful, on their website they baked in savings from tax credits and fossil fuel savings to show a lower $33,000 price, which of course you cannot buy. The Kona Electric SE, starting at $32,675 with 200 miles of range. The Kia has a great low-end portion of the market. And Kia has been making some very popular EVs recently. I particularly like the 800 volt charging offered in many Kia models. Cuts charging time in half. The Fiat 500. Cute little two-door. The 500e starts at $32,500 and offers approximately 150 miles of range. The Fiat 500e has been in production in Europe for some time. The 500E is due to hit U.S. shores soon, and it seems like a great urban go-car. The Volvo EX30, starting at around $34,950 and up to 275 miles of range. This is Volvo's lowest cost EV entrant. Produced by China's Greeley Auto, one of China's leading manufacturers. This Volvo offers the IKEA take on Tesla's playbook. One mono screen and a sparse interior. Personally, I don't like these interior approaches, but perhaps you do. Some summary conclusions. Fortunately, there's now many choices for low cost four and two door EVs. Note though, to deliver the range to price value as Aptera does, Aptera is the leader. None will offer the acceleration the Aptera will. None will offer the efficiency the Aptera will. And absolutely none will offer a powered by the sun option. How will the Aptera fare in terms of volume of vehicles sold? Certainly this is anyone's guess. Perhaps the Aptera will sell like the first generation Honda Insight, a hypermiler. Though only 17,000 units in total were produced over a span of six years. Perhaps the Aptera will sell like the low slung and sporty Mazda RX-7, selling some 800,000 units 
over 18 years. Or perhaps the Aptera will sell like the Chevrolet Corvette, selling some 20,000 cars a year, every year. Or perhaps the Aptera will sell like the Volkswagen Beetle, selling some 23 million units over 65 years. We just don't know. We do know Aptera has some 24,000 reservation holders. We do know the market is seemingly begging for affordable, longer-range EVs. And we do know that people want to do more with less, like driving the Aptera with up to 40 miles a day free from the sun every day. Part 4. Update on Aptera funding. As many of you know, Aptera Motors recently engaged an investment banking company, U.S. Capital, to raise their next rounds of funding. You may recall that for some months, I have been advocating for an investment banker engagement by Aptera. After all, Aptera raised some $100 million from the crowd. It was, I believe, time for the company to take the next steps forward in their fundraising journey and on to their IPO milestone. So I'm very pleased to hear that Apteras engaged the investment banking firm of U.S. Capital. Now, because of the shift in Apteras fundraising venues, Aptera has stated that the last day to invest in their crowdfunding is June the 30th. So if you are interested in investing in this pre-IPO company, don't delay. The window to invest is closing soon. I have a link down below to an Aptera's investment page. I invest it. Now, as Aptera has engaged that investment banker for their foreseeable funding needs, thoughts now turn to the next phase in their corporate growth. Certainly, we need to get through production and tent vehicles, rollout and production, which is no easy feat. But once we get through this early production phase, the next path is the road to profitability. Cost of goods sold, inventory, working capital, warranty expenses, sales and marketing, distribution, all these things contribute to capital needs, gross profit, and net profit. In addition to the delivery of my Aptera, the financial items I just mentioned will be increasingly on my mind. For the goal is a financially sustainable Aptera Motors delivering awesome vehicles. That's all I have for today, friends. I look forward to sharing time with you again soon and reading your comments below. And until then, stay well, do good work, and charge on. Cruising, wingless flight. I love Aptera, it feels so right. The future is now. Protect Mother Earth. Keep her healthy for what it's worth. What's your pleasure, lunar or soul? Let's save the planet. Taking off from the sun No more drilling, can't you see?